10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, ignition, and lift off. Go Falcon, go TD-7. Vehicle is pitching downrange. M1 DT and pressures are nominal. And 35 seconds into the flight, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Launch Complex 39A at the Kennedy Space Center, carrying the TD-7 satellite. Now, during ascent, we power tilt or nominal. gimbal. There you hear a call at the power and telemetry is nominal so far. Now, right now, Falcon 9 is gimbling its engines, or tilting the engines so that the rocket will begin to turn horizontally in a maneuver called the gravity Falcon turn. supersonic. Moments ago, we throttled down the engines in preparation for max Q, or the moment of maximum aerodynamic pressure. Max Q. And there you hear that call out for max Q, a critical moment during flight when the combined stresses caused by Falcon 9 accelerating through the atmosphere and the ambient static pressure are at their greatest. Now, right now, you can see Falcon 9 traveling just about 2,500 kilometers per hour. We are looking for approximately 27,000 kilometers per hour or 17,500 miles per hour for our orbital velocity today. And you can track the progress to orbit by keeping an eye on the stage one telemetry in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. Now, coming up shortly, we have several events that will happen in quick succession, including main engine cutoff or MECO, stage separation, second engine start one or SES one, and fairing separation. During main engine cutoff, we will shut down the nine Merlin 1D engines, followed by stage separation. Once separated, the second once separated from the second stage, the booster will begin heading back to Earth, while the second stage MVAC engine will simultaneously ignite for the first time, followed by fairing separation. Miko. Stage separation confirmed. And back ignition. And there you heard and hopefully saw a good Miko stage separation and ignition of the MVAC engine on stage two. You can now see the first stage beginning its maneuvers to prepare for landing on the short fall of Gravitas drone ship in the Atlantic Ocean. As a reminder, we will not have any stage two views today, but you can keep an eye on stage two's progress with its telemetry in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. Fairing separation confirmed. And there you hear confirmation of separation of our payload fairings. Having done their job, they will now parachute down into the Atlantic Ocean where we will be attempting to retrieve them using our fairing recovery vessel, Doug. Both vehicles are on a nominal trajectory. And a good call out there that both stage one and stage two are following their planned trajectories. Just over four minutes into the flight, uh, coming up at six minutes, 15 seconds into the flight, we can expect to have some great views of the first stage's entry burn. Now for this entry burn, we will relight three of the Falcon 9 first stage engines on the first stage, starting with the center E9 engine followed by the E1 and E5 engines. This will help slow the vehicle down as it passes back into Earth's denser, lower atmosphere and we need to slow down in order to reduce reentry forces, which ultimately helps us recover and reuse the first stages of Falcon 9.
And again, watching these views from the first stage as the sunlight is hitting it in the upper atmosphere, you can see some of the ice particles coming off of the first stage, which is perfectly normal. Those flashes that you also see are the thrusters on Falcon 9's first stage, aligning it for the upcoming entry burn. And speaking of that entry burn, when that happens, Falcon 9 will actually be, decelerate, be decelerating by firing its Merlin engines and flying through its exhaust or plume. This causes a deposit of soot to be... This causes a layer of soot to be deposited on the vehicle's surface, which is why our flight-proven vehicles look the way that they do. That soot actually comes from the carbon-based fuel that Falcon 9 uses. Both vehicles continue to follow a nominal trajectory. Stage one, entry burn startup. And there we can see a good start to our entry Stage burn. Stage one FTS is saved. This is roughly a 30 second burn and you can keep an eye on how our speed is decreasing on the bottom left hand side of your screen. Stage one, entry burn shutdown. And we have had confirmation of entry burn shutdown. Now, reusability is key to lowering the cost of spaceflight, which enables more investment in critical scientific research. And the Falcon 9 first stage supporting today's mission is, has just performed its 16th entry burn and is about to perform its 16th landing. The Merlin engines that the first stage uses are optimized for sea level, producing about 190,000 pounds of thrust during ascent and descent. The MVAC engine on the stage other... Stage two is in terminal guidance. The MVAC engine on the second stage is actually optimized to fire in the vacuum of space, producing about 220,500 pounds of thrust. Coming up next will be the first stage landing burn. And as a reminder, we are stage targeting... one, transonic. We are targeting landing on our drone ship, a shortfall of gravitas. Stage two, FTS is saved. Also continuing to hear the callouts for flight termination system safing on stage two, a nominal call. Stage one landing burn. Nominal park orbit insertion. And you can see Falcon 9 performing its landing burn as we also had a good call for stage two entering its parking orbit. Stage one landing leg deploy. Stage one landing confirmed. And there you have it, SpaceX's 369th landing and recovery of an orbital class rocket.